Dunsinane is the story of what happens after the end of Shakespeare's play Macbeth. So Macbeth ends with the death of Macbeth and an English army uh, arrived in Scotland to put King Malcolm on the throne. And Dunsinane begins with that moment and it focuses on the English commander Seward who has arrived thinking that his job is essentially to make sure Malcolm is safely king and uh, England's border is secure. But unfortunately he discovers that the information that he's been given about Scotland isn't really true and that the idea that the previous king was a tyrant that everybody wanted overthrown and that they would be welcomed with open arms isn't maybe quite as um, truthful as he'd be led to believe. And so he suddenly finds himself in the middle of a quite a difficult political uh, situation and he decides instead of withdrawing that he's going to stay and try and impose and set up a new and stable kingdom. And the play is the story of what happens to him as a result of that decision. About five years ago, I think, uh, I had noticed that there was a lot of productions of Macbeth around the place. And I, th I could sort of see why there were productions of Macbeth, because at that time we had just, I say we, Britain and America, had just uh, invaded and uh, Iraq and occupied Iraq. And so it seemed to me that there was an element of looking at the military and uh, looking at the idea of the overthrow of a tyrant. But it occurred to me that, as I was watching these plays, that really what was interesting was not so much the overthrow of the tyrant, but just that question of what happened after you overthrew a tyrant. And I also knew, as most Scots do, that the real Macbeth uh, there's not much we know about him, but one thing we do know about him is that he lasted for about 20 years on the throne and therefore in all likelihood was rather a good king because this was a time when um, kings were changing every sort of six months as they all killed each other and another, you know, they were all they were constantly fighting. So for a king to last for 15 to 20 years, he must have been doing something right. I mean, even if it was... Uh, in some way tyrannical. So it occurred to me there was a, a few interesting parallels in this idea of an English army who might have been told something about this king and that they then arrive, in a sense, they've been told what we know from Shakespeare, that he's a terrible murderer and he's, you know, uh, responsible for all sorts of mayhem and then they arrive and discover it's just not as simple as that he's you know not necessarily that he's good either but just that the political landscape that they find themselves in is far more complicated than they were led to believe. I began the play very clearly wanting to talk about the present day and about the conflicts that we're involved in and there's a sense in which any piece of writing that you do is always about its present moment. You can't avoid that. But I did find it quite interesting that the more I began to write, the more I was interested in the story that I was telling particularly, and that uh, any parallels, if you like, were, um, were a, a, a byproduct. And I became very interested, for example, in the histories of you know, Scotland in the 10th century and so on. Um, and at one point, I did a workshop on the play with the RSC, and I was I remember describing it to the director then and saying, in a way, I, I would like people's knowledge of Afghanistan to help them think about 10th century Scotland. <laughs> but of course, as we come to produce it, it's, it's obvious that this story of an English army in a foreign land is going to be read and understood as being about, uh, I suspect in this case Afghanistan actually, partly because that's the conflict most at the forefront at the moment and partly because 
its parallels are probably best with the play. Um, one of the processes of the rehearsal period has been trying to identify the points where the story makes those parallels without us, without the text needing to push it home. And so there's been quite a bit of cutting where where the where it, it seems you know too consciously a comment because really the best thing is that the story should be the story, and then the audience can take from it any parallels that they want to you know uh, enjoy themselves. So it seemed to me that 17-year-old boys would be the people doing a lot of the fighting and labouring. And, um, and that interested me because I suppose my overwhelming reaction to the uh, British soldiers and the British casualties from the war in Afghanistan was an awareness of how young most of them seemed. I, d I mean, soldiers are always young. I don't, I don't know why. I, I mean, it's probably just a function of me, me getting older that I've noticed that, but I did notice it. And I, I think I was very aware that there's something ever so slightly sanitizing about the theater sometimes when it approaches a subject of war. Uh, uh, partly because the actors that you employ will tend to be in their mid-twenties because they're experienced good actors to play roles of teenagers. It's very, very hard to get you know people who are genuinely the right age but good enough to, to do these roles. And so therefore when you look at a group of soldiers you don't tend to have the visceral gut understanding of just how young these people are and that was something I wanted very much this play to do and, I, and it's something the RSC has risen to that challenge in terms of involvement of various youth theatres and so on that some of the roles um, will be being played by, by people who are of the same age as the soldiers who they're representing. He is, he's trying to do the best thing and he, I think he's a good and noble man. And I was very interested, that's what I wanted to write, actually. I, you know, you, I wanted to write a proper hero. Um, and uh, to give him a good chance at that. So that, yeah, no, I, I hope the audience do feel that they can sort of see his side of, 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 of why he's doing things. Um, but as the play continues, you, I think you begin to realise that there are complications and limits and that the question that the play really poses is, is it possible to impose peace on, on somebody, on someone else's behalf? Can you, and if you, th and you think, well, well, of course it is, we have peacekeeping forces, we, we intervene to do that all the time, but if you think about a mother coming into a room and there's two children fighting, and she sort of says, right, you, you over there and you over there and shut up, you know, when that mother leaves the room, they're going to start fighting again. There's a sort of, you, you can't make other people sort, they have to sort themselves out. And I think the play is asking the question of, is there a, is there a point at which the process of intervening, in fact, leads you, is it possible that in trying to create peace, you end up creating more war? And that's, that's really the question um, that the play asks. Well, there's some good dances in it. Um, and some good songs. I have another play I recently did, which was uh, a, a romantic comedy, and it had songs in it. It was uh, a very cheerful piece called Midsummer. Um, and I was noticing that actually there's more songs in Dunsinane than there was in that play. Um, not songs, but any means that the actors sing out, not in any way like a musical, but just that, you know, uh, a lot of the atmosphere of the play comes out of the way that music is used or dancing is used. Because there's obviously a courtly, Dunsinane is the name of a castle, and a court, if you like, and there's a courtly ritual about everything uh, that is done. Uh, and a very big set piece, which we were rehearsing this morning, is 
uh, a wedding dance and something happens at the wedding dance, very dramatic, but we had to have the dance and it looked wonderful seeing all these people um, moving around the stage and the music and the, the movement. Uh, I also think it's very funny, uh, particularly there's a counterpoint through the play of the story, if you like, of the elite, Seward and Groch and Malcolm and Macduff, is counterpointed with the story of the ordinary soldiers who are kind of going about their business. And a lot of that is very funny and very, if you like, ordinary um, dialogue and exploration about their situation. Uh, but it, it's, it is a tragedy. I mean, it is, it's, it's maybe not a date play. Oh, a date if your date likes tragedy.